The Olympics have always been at the center of controversies, and the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics were no different. While the 2022 Games had a lot of bright moments, they were overshadowed by controversies from the start. From the opening ceremonies to positive COVID tests and concerns over the players, there's no shortage of drama to discuss. Keep on watching to get all the news on the Beijing Winter Olympics. Beijing Opening Ceremony China being the host country for the Winter Olympics came with heavy backlash, not just from the public, but also from countries such as America, the UK, Canada, and Australia. They all announced a diplomatic boycott of the Olympics, citing human rights violations, specifically because of the allegations of ethnic cleansing of Uyghur Muslims. Keeping this in mind, it isn't that big of a surprise that the opening ceremony of the Games also stirred controversy. China chose to send a young Uyghur athlete into the spotlight as she took part of the ceremony as a torchbearer. Dinajir Yilamijang is a 20-year-old cross-country skier who has been training for Olympics to make her dream of competing in the Olympics come true. She was the final torchbearer at the ceremony, and beside her was bi-athlete Zhao Jiawen. It is obvious that this choice, meant to be seen by thousands and broadcast globally at the Bird's Nest National Stadium, had clear political undertones. The young athlete is from the Uyghur minority, the Xinjiang region to be specific. This region is also where China's leading Communist Party is accused of widespread human rights violations and abuse. After Yila Mijiang made her appearance on global television, Chinese diplomats started posting clips of her family cheering as they watched the ceremony, and some were seen wiping their tears as well. Failed political scheme China has repeatedly pushed for critics to stop politicizing the Olympic Games, but they were overshadowed by the accusations of human rights abuse, COVID troubles, and concerns over what would happen to athletes if they spoke up during the events. A journalist asked the International Olympic Committee whether the choice to make Yila Mijiang a part of the ceremony was politically neutral. They responded by saying that the committee doesn't discriminate against anyone based on their background and that Yila Mijiang had every right to take part in the Olympics. Game organizers said that the torchbearers were picked based on their birth dates spanning every decade from the 1950s to the 2000s. Ma Hayun, a professor at Frostburg State University and an expert on Xinjiang, told the Reuters news agency that China chose to show a Uyghur athlete as the torchbearer to counter the claims of the genocide of the Uyghur Muslims. But since most people in the West think everything China says is just for show, it didn't really work. Lack of meals, poor living conditions, and quarantine difficulties. Soon after the Olympic Games started, there was a flood of complaints from both athletes and officials about the terrible living conditions, lack of meals, isolating rooms, as well as bad weather conditions. Christian Schweiger, German alpine skiing coach, called out the Beijing catering and how scarce the meals were for professional high-performing athletes. The options were limited to some nuts, chocolates, and crisps. He added that there were no hot meals available. The U.S. teams had to come prepared with their own food, reportedly bringing bags of pasta. Lack of food and isolation. There were also many concerns about how Beijing would handle the Winter Olympics in the context of COVID-19, and those concerns turned out to be completely valid. A Russian biathlon athlete, Valeria Vaznetsova, revealed the poor treatment of the athletes living under Beijing's strict quarantine conditions. In a since-deleted Instagram post, the athlete showed an admittedly sad tray of food, saying she'd been getting the exact same meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She wrote that she has lost a lot of weight and that her bones were sticking out. She didn't have access to any other type of food and had stopped sleeping. The only edible thing out of the tray, according to her, was a handful of pasta. In a heartbreaking statement, the Russian athlete admitted that she just wanted the situation to end and that she would cry every day. She described having bad stomach pains and revealed that she'd eaten all the fat on a piece of meat because of how hungry she was. Some athletes were reportedly getting worse meals than others. Future complications. Any athletes who tested positive for COVID-19 and showed symptoms would immediately immediately need to be hospitalized, while those that tested positive and didn't show symptoms had to be isolated in a designated hotel. If an athlete tested negative on two back-to-back -back tests, they could return to the games. Kim Milemans, a Belgian skeleton racer, broke down in an Instagram video when talking about the Beijing quarantine situation. Though the 25-year-old athlete initially tested positive, she thought she would be taken to the Olympic Village after testing negative later. Instead, she was taken to another isolation spot. Many more showed their anger at the Beijing COVID situation, such as Dirk Schimmel Fennig, head of the German delegation, Finnish ice hockey coach Jukka Janelin, and Polish speed skater Natalia Malashiska. The International Olympic Committee gave a statement saying that they were working on solving the issues with the management, and though they felt for the athletes who couldn't compete because of COVID, the rules were there to keep the Olympic Games safe. Russian skater doping scandal. Russian skater Kamila Valieva was the center of perhaps the biggest scandal in this year's Winter Olympics. At the Russian Championships, Valieva tested positive for a banned heart medication, but the results were only announced after she helped win a team gold medal. Because of the positive test, the team's win also came under doubt. If she's found guilty,
guilty according to the World Anti-Doping Code, the whole team could be disqualified. Despite being part of the doping scandal, the 15-year-old was cleared to skate again by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. They ruled that she was protected by the WADA rules because she is a minor and stopping her from competing would cause irreversible damage. Though the IOC did announce that if she did place among the top three, there would be no flower ceremony. They also said that in that case, the other skaters wouldn't be having a medal ceremony either because Valley Ava could have hers taken away. What drugs exactly? Valley Ava tried to explain the positive test by saying the drug, trimetazeadine, had somehow entered her system accidentally, but her explanation was proved to be wrong by a brief filed by the WADA. The statement said that the two drugs the skater admitted to taking, l cardinine and Hypoxin, showed that she couldn't have taken trimetazeadine by error. While Hypoxin is used for increasing the blood flow to the heart, l cardinine is a performance enhancer that if injected above a certain limit, is banned. So when these two medications are combined with the likes of trimetazeadine, it is clear that there's a specific reason for it. Travis Tiger, the U.S. anti-doping CEO, said that this combination is used to enhance performance, and that made Valley Ava's explanation very unlikely. Athlete board in the U.S. representing China. Freestyle skier Eileen Gu caused some controversy as people wondered why an athlete who was born and raised in the U.S. was representing China in the Winter Olympics. Gu was born to a Chinese mother and an American father and learned to ski in the mountains of California. Though when she was 15, she decided she wanted to represent China and not the U.S. Despite the drama, she is the standout winner of the Winter Olympics. The 18-year-old went on to win three gold medals in the freestyle skiing events, but it wasn't long after her last win in the Big Air Final that she was getting questioned left and right about why she was representing China. Final matches. The Russian skater came in the lead in the women's short program after she was allowed to compete again. She beat the reigning world champion and her teammate Anna Shcherbakova. Valieva gave an almost flawless performance, but it seems the media attention had gotten to her as she broke down crying after and refused to speak to the press. She finished her run at the Olympics with the women's individual skate. She shakily started with a quad salcho, made a blunder on her triple axle, then fell while doing a squad toe loop triple toe loop combo. The 15-year-old fell one last time when doing her other quad toe loop. Though she did have more slip-ups after that, the earlier falls had already sealed her fate. Valieva finished in fourth place, while Anna Sherbakova placed first. The longer investigation about the positive test and whether Russia will get the gold medal from the team event could take several months to resolve. And that's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on all the drama that went on in the Winter Olympics this year? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.